from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Now, everybody to come on in the room. Let me get my recording devices popping. And we're going to shop it up like we always do, ladies and gentlemen. How is the family? Happy MLK Day to all of you. Hope you had a great MLK celebration today, paying honor and homage to our foundational Black American icon, Dr. Martin Luther King. Shout out to all of you and the rest of the foundational Black Americans and the FBA supporters out there. Waiting on everybody to pile on in the room. Today still feels like a weekend because of the holiday. Feels like a Sunday. So a lot of people's days feel off right now. I know mine do. But uh, we're going to get some calls a little bit later while we're waiting on everybody to pile in the room. I just retweeted something. Did y'all see that FBI tweet? Every year, the FBI, they put up a troll tweet, and they're doing this to be slick. They put up a celebratory MLK tweet talking about they celebrate his legacy and then they get clowned in the comment section. They got clowned so bad they had to put a community note on their tweet saying, hey, by the way, these guys work to help get Dr. King up out the pain. So they do that little trollish tweet every year. The tweet is, um, this MLK Day, the FBI honors one of the most prominent leaders in the civil rights movement and reaffirms its commitment to Dr. King's legacy of fairness and equal justice for all. Boy, you know how scandalous these people are. Well, y'all better understand how scandalous the SWSs are, man. For them to put that up there and they went out of their way to take our brother up out of here. In fact, the FBI was basically designed to do surveillance on us and to subjugate and suppress any type of foundational Black American progress. You know, Hoover really had it in for the Black community. The Hoover and those guys knew that the people with the biggest potential to get rid of systematic white supremacy were the foundational black Americans. That's why they had all eyes on us. Wasn't the mafia. Remember, Hoover never really went after the mafia. Real organized crime, nah. It was black folks they were doing surveillance on. Because they always know. Let me let me talk to my FBA family. The dominant society runs this Jedi mind trick on a lot of black people and have black people thinking that we are incompetent. We're not incompetent. That's a psychop. They try to con us into feeling that we can't do anything without them and without the dominant society, we're just helpless and hopeless. No, one thing they know about us, and this is why they have to keep subjugating us all the time, um, they understand that we, as Foundation of Black Americans, because of what we've been through, we have something that a lot of groups don't have, and that's the ability to quickly adapt to any situation and environment and survive it. A lot of folks don't have our adaptability and survival skills. We, as foundational Black Americans, we know how to adapt. We know how to figure it out, 
and we know how to survive. If you put us in any setting, after a while, we'll get the hang of it. We'll start catching on. Look at some of the things that we've done historically. Even after we've been repeatedly sabotaged. See, that's the thing. When we talk about progress of people, no other group has been sabotaged like us. Not even remotely close. And not only have we been sabotaged, we've been able to repeatedly dust ourselves off and just restart and reboot and just do it again, over and over and over again. We can still adapt. We've created so many things out of adapting. That's amazing that the dominant society has to take hold of. I mentioned the mafia, mafia earlier. We, Foundational Black Americans, we created the modern lottery system. We were playing the numbers. That was a creation that we did in the 1800s. We were creating a system in order for us to, to make a few dollars, a gambling system. We were the ones creating the numbers game. In the numbers game, the mafia saw that. They wanted in on it. And eventually, the, um, the government got in on it with the lottery. We've always created things. We created direct marketing. We created direct marketing sales out of necessity because we had to adapt. People like Madam C.J. Walker, because of the Jim Crow laws, because we had limited mobility in the physical realm throughout the country where there were certain places where we couldn't go. And when we traveled the country, we had to have a network of people to know what's cool, what's not cool. So we were forced to network, we had to adapt. And in that ad adaptation of networking, people like Madam C.J. Walker help create a marketing strategy where they can sell products and have other people sell the products for them, set it up so it's a word of mouth or who you know program where people could get broke off with commissions if you sold to somebody you knew. It was all about a, a buddy system type thing. It was a direct marketing thing where you had to know somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody in order to get the product. That was a whole new marketing thing. That's why Madam C.J. Walker was so successful. And then other corporations started to follow that pattern. Mary Kay Products, Amway, and all of these other companies started to do the same thing Madam C.J. Walker was doing. She created that whole marketing template out of adapting. See, we got to understand how powerful we are. And let me tell you something, the dominant society, they see how we can adapt. That's why there's a constant subjugation of us because the minute the foot is off of our neck, we start prospering. The minute we get a crumb, that's why the reparations thing, they're so tight about that. Because listen, they're going to eventually have to cough up that reparations and they know it because we're too focused right now. They know this. And they understand once we get what we're supposed to get, it's going to be to the moon. Shout out to our brother, Black Alpha. Shout out to um, Brother Marcel. They were out there in um, was it South Carolina um, and, and some of the other Foundation of Black American brothers and sisters out there stomping hard for reparations. Man, I take my hat off to you, brothers and sisters. Boy, the, the law enforcement was on cat's bumpers. What was interesting, I saw some of the video, the Coon AACP had the FBA brothers and sisters kicked out, or they were trying to, and I'm still looking at some of the footage because the brothers were out there, had the reparation signs, like, hey, man, we what's up with them reparations? So you have the, the, the Boule Sambos, have them removed. Also, what was interesting, you had some... Um, white Palestinian, um, um, pro-Palestinian people out there protesting for Palestine and all that and yelling and screaming. They, law enforcement didn't do anything to them. The Kuhn AACP didn't do anything to the Palestinian protesters, but the brothers and sisters who were out there talking about reparations, well, they lined up the fire trucks, looked like they were about to hose them down. They had the guns about to pull the guns on them. 
So, man, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, man, we get, this DC thing might really need to go down for real, for real. So we can let them know that we're not going to be intimidated by that kind of stuff. Yeah, these folks are getting shook off us standing up for the reparations that we deserve. So it's an interesting thing going on out here. But again, going back to to the legacy of MLK, we're standing on that MLK business. Remember, Dr. Martin Luther King was about reparations. He was a reparationist. He said, we're going to Washington, D.C. to get that check. They like to leave that part of the message out. You understand? Shout out to Nikki the God. I see you, beloved. Well, let me get a couple of people in here. Uh, let me see. Let's get um, Ani, and then we're going to get our brother, Great. Okay, let me see. Great Black. We'll get him in a minute. Great Black might be one of them trolls that look like one of them troll accounts. But Ani, what's up, brother? What's going on? Which, which brother? I'm good. How are you, sir? Doing good. Yeah, they were protesting in my hometown here in Columbia, South Carolina. I text Marcel. I couldn't make it, but I saw the footage because uh, when we did the George Floyd riots, we just came down there, you know, just to voice our opinion. We didn't do nothing too rowdy, but all of a sudden, our county brought these tanks out I've never seen before. Till this mm-hmm. day, they they brought these tanks out. It had like a metallic exterior that I've never seen before. So when it comes to us, they always go to the extreme. And I'll let Oh, yeah. Know. Thank you so much. Yeah, I saw that, man. I remember going to Ferguson and Baltimore. Uh, I remember the Freddie Gray joint. I went out there to Baltimore to support the brothers and sisters out there. And boy, and I, I made a note of that. I'm like, this military weaponry they got us. This is like some shit you take to the Middle East somewhere. Well, they had all of the brand new shiny tanks and armored vehicles. I mean, it looked like some stuff you go to Desert Storm with. It was heavy military stuff, real heavy. What's up, um, great black troll? We got the um, the troll op in here. What's going on, brother? What's on your mind? Great black. It's great black. Okay, you must uh, must not have known you were not on your Finster account. The great black, you good? Okay. Well, he thought he was listening anonymously, and he wasn't. All right. Let's get on. Um, I don't know how I get you out of here. I'm trying to get your ass out of here. So you put some weird in the jumbotron. You got to watch out for that. Let's get um, vibe. Let's get vibe in here. All right, let's get this. Hey, what's going on, Tyreek? How you doing today? I'm good, Mr. Vibe. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Shout out to the FBA family. Y'all want to uh, 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 see if you've seen this. It was a video that resurfaced like yesterday of um, a Chicago. It was in a, a council meeting talking about immigration. And you had a Latino immigrant in the back talking about Black people don't deserve uh, this and that. You know, you guys are lazy. And I, in, in one of your pot, in one of your uh, Twitter spaces, you said a couple months ago, you know, three months after they come over here, they're going to start talking that bitch out against foundational Black Americans. And right. It looked like the brother haven't. It looked like the Latino dude haven't been over here for two days. And he's yeah. all he's all in the council meeting talk about we lazy and we this and that. And uh, that, yeah, that's all I have to say, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you. And, and right, I saw that clip. I, I saw that clip, and that's the reason, man, I, I'm just not supporting that. I, that. I'm not. I keep telling folks, man, that doesn't benefit us, sitting here stomping for people to come over here and flood the zone. We That was a con game we had in the 60s, thinking that we're going to have folks come over here and we're going to fight to help them get over here and get out of their third world countries and um, elevate them and man we let fight we fought to get people over here and the minute they get here they try to show contempt they turn into Vivek and did y'all see him lose he lost out there in Iowa and immediately started um, butt sucking with Trump after Trump clowned him the other day Trump clowned this dude and he was groveling and, and 
and, and bowing down to Trump. No, and but he has all the smoke for us. Vivek has all the smoke for black people. His whole platform running around here talking greasy about black people. The white folks sit up here and clown his ass and he's up here groveling to them. And we're supposed to be allies with that? No, thank you. No, thank you. We ain't losing nothing by delineating from these people, family. See, uh, for uh, the delineation movement and our brother Claude Anderson had been trying to tell us for decades that we have to delineate because we are a unique group. But many of us, we were on this kumbaya thing. All our minority brothers, it's it, more numbers that'll help us. No, 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 no. We miscalculated the buffoonery, coonery, and the broken spirit of a lot of these groups, man. They come over here waiting to undermine us. Their spirits are broken. They are not about to fight white supremacy at all. And we have to come to the realization of that. And we have. And we started it. We, we've cut folks off. And as you see, the sky didn't fall. A lot of black folks were afraid to tell all these other people to kick damn rocks when it comes to issues as far as tangibles. A lot of us were afraid if we tell folks to kick rocks, they're going to deprive us of something. If we tell other groups, hey, we're not going to really stomp for you like that. They'd, oh, the, there's going to be a big hole opening up in the ground and we're going to fall in. And, you know, we, we had this real weird fear that these folks could do something. They ain't, do, they ain't doing nothing. They can't do anything. You're a foundation of black America. What, the, what are they going to do to you? What the white supremacists had not done. And we've dealt with them. We didn't already dealt with the white supremacists and survived them. What was the tablet going to do? But cry on the internet. That's all they do. And I'm not talking about our, F- our non-FBA brothers and sisters who are rioters. I'm not talking about you. I'm not. We, we got some non-FBA brothers and sisters out here who are rioters. Some of you are in the room. I'm not talking about the rioters. I'm talking about that tether class of all of these non-FBA people who want to come over and undermine us, the Vivex and the Diane Yaps. Do y'all know about Diane Yap? Many of you guys who follow me, y'all know about Diane Yap, this anti-Black Asian woman who sits on Twitter all day spewing vile anti-Black vitriol. She's a woman up there in the Bay Area, I think. And the thing is, she gets to spit all types of vitriol about Black people every day, but if a Black person says anything about an Asian person, boy, your page is going to get taken down and you're going to get a strike on your page. You can't even respond to them. You can't even clap back at them. But they can sit up here and talk greasy about us all day. Let's get Kitty in here. Then we'll get Marcus. Kitty, let's get Kitty. Hi, Tyreek. <laughs> Hello. Are you? How are you, Miss Kitty? I'm good. And yourself? I'm good. Kitty, now where are you from, ma'am? I'm from Florida, Miami. Oh, there you go. So what's on your mind, ma'am? Um, I'm just a little bit, sometimes I feel a little torn, right? Because I love listening to your show. Mm-hmm. But hear me out. <laughs> Um, my mom, she, you know, born and raised in Miami, uh, grandma, great grandma, so on and so forth. But my dad, he's from Haiti. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like I resonate with, you know, being more so FBA and more so yeah. culture because, you know, it's brought up here, fully born and raised here in Miami and all that great stuff. And yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that? I mean, that's what it is. As long as you um, don't have no dual allegiance where you want to undermine us. See, that's the thing. That's that's all our thing. If There's a lot of people out here who have a half FBA lineage. Our problem is we don't want people to have these dual allegiances where they've been taught to have vitriol towards us because you have a lot of um, people from the Caribbean or dudes from... Um, um, parts of Africa who will come over and get a FBA woman and still have contempt for foundational black Americans. And then when they have kids, it's like, Oh, you stay away. You are, even though you have a kata, stay away from the other kata. So it's a real weird thing. And we don't want them niggas around. All right. Okay. That's our thing. 
Yeah. Right. No, I understand that. That definitely makes perfect sense, you know, because I mean, with my dad and his sister, my aunt was actually bought here before my dad. My dad's 57. My aunt's 67, if I'm not mistaken. So mm -hmm. she, you know, she had children with a with a Haitian man as well, you know, being a Haitian woman. And so there was always a certain level of disrespect. She's always kept towards my mother for you know being with my dad and i've always mm. felt that on the side of my dad's family though my mom's family you know they are very accepting of me and though they had their little issues because it's like what why would you go out and <laughs> you know do that so your your haitian side had contempt for the fba side they did yes you know it was very much ain't like that, ain't, it ain't that crazy yeah you, 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 it was very weird yeah. to me, you know, my mom's side has always been very accepting of us, you know. Of course. Shower with love always, but no, it was always, they always side-eyed me and my brother going over there, though my mom was very kind enough to, you know, send us over there. What would they, what would the Haitian side, what were some of the slick things they would say about the foundational black American side? Some of the things would, oh my God, my mom's cooking. Though I love my mom's cooking. I'm a, I'm very big on Southern cooking. So very much. Um, you know, collard greens, cornbread, macaroni and cheese, and all that good stuff. That's how I, my mother would cook, and it's very delicious. Great woman. Um, she now lives right. in Hinesville. But my dad's side, they would always say, well, you know, she doesn't do it how it's supposed to be done, or she doesn't oh, do this how it's supposed to be done. And I promise you, I don't, I've been to many Haitians, many Americans' house, you know, FBA houses, and I can tell you, it doesn't matter. It's just if you're a clean woman, you're a clean woman. If you're a woman that can cook, you can cook. It's not really a race. You know, I'm sorry, not really a cultural thing, but they always made it seem like my mom couldn't do it as well as they can do it. When in my reality, my mom kept my house spotless <laughs> you know food was wow. always delicious it was That's never amazing. good enough right I, look, I've been to Haiti many times filming a movie and the food is aight it ain't <laughs> for really come on for real for them to sit here and say anything about a foundational black American dish the irony and how some of the people to truth be told they, oh, eat dirt cookies over there like it's normal Boy, the irony. And I'm not saying this to be mean-spirited. They do. So that type of stuff, it's amazing that people who come over from rubble after we help them have the nerve to sit here and talk greasy about us out of all people. And then people wonder why we delineate. It's amazing. How's your relationship with your, your Haitian side of your family now, dear? It actually is pretty well, but it took me to want to interact with them more. You know, they actually, um, they actually had some nasty things to say about me for a while because truthfully, after 13 years old or so, 13 years old, my mom and my father split. Yeah. You know, because of um, some situations, specifically with my dad, you know, doing whatever it is that he wanted to do while also being married to my mom. She had divorced him after that time, but um, it was more so me wanting to re reach out to them because I wanted to know who they were. Right. You know, it wasn't them constantly bombarding me with phone calls and trying to know me. The only person that really did that was my uncle, but my dad's brother, but he's always been a little bit weird, so I don't really want to talk to him. Well, real shit. Real talk. You know, so um, it went that way. And my mom's side, I mean, hey, they beg for me all the time. They, they're they always like, but now I'm, as a young one, as a young lady, I'm 24 now, you know, I just prefer to be alone because I don't, um, I love my mom's side. I just came from Hinesville visiting my mom, you know, for the holidays. But 
that's really the only person that I really run to. And uh, yeah, the other thought is really just when I feel like I have a need and want because, you know, as a woman, you want to know who you are, just a person. You want to know your life and your family. And I see them only because I want to know them, not necessarily because I they want to see me. They want to see me now because they see I'm doing well, but. Right, yeah. right. All right, sis, but thank you so much, beloved. I appreciate you. It's heavy. That is heavy. That is heavy, man. A uh, real tether. Hop on, man. How you doing, Marcus Sanders? All right, what's going on, real tether? How are you, sir? Why don't you talk about uh, when you murdered Robbie Sonny Gibson in Detroit? Cap, well, how about it when I? You a convicted murderer. Well, I only murdered your grandma's cootie, and that was one time. I murdered it, and I beat it up. That was the only murder I engaged in, sir. Why did you change your um, name, man? Uh, no, Why'd you? Um, because after I murdered that coochie, she was looking for me, and I didn't want her to find me. I met her at the swap meet, and I told her my name was Willis Johnson. You used to be a so broke mixtape rapper. I, uh, I did. I did, just like Wash you. Wash your ass and, and everything. Yeah, and then yes, and you need to wash yours because it smells like Jolof and must, and that's why you need root work, sir. I smell good. Um, no, you don't, dude. No, you don't. I can smell you over the phone. You smell like ostrich ass and peanut brittle. What? A... So, sir, get how the, you go your, wash your ass. Get, get 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 yourself together and get some better material, sir. All right. Let's get um some more people in here. <laughs> Let's get some more people. Tethers, boy. Tethers are not witty. <laughs> Boy, Tethers, y'all need to really work on that material. No wonder y'all get roasted in school and then get upset. <laughs> Somebody roasts you in the fifth grade and now you in therapy trying to make comebacks with your snaps and then never witty. Let's get um disrespectful. Let's get disrespectful in here. My, what's my dog shut up with the snoring? Disrespectful, hop on, man. Hey, what's good with you, Flex? Bro, you funny oh, as good. hell, man. Uh, you owe me a Sprite. I just sneezed <laughs> up laughing at that <laughs> shit. Good Lord. Hey, y'all got to come with some better jokes, man. Hey, uh, but yeah, now shout out I to know. you, man. The MLK thing, though. Uh, I'm sorry, my bad. What you say, what up? Still getting the Sprite Go ahead, go ahead about MLK. <laughs> So you see how the conservatives are trying to attack MLK now? It's, it's insane. Yeah. Like, they're getting desperate. Yeah, yeah, they they trying to disrespect our brother and disrespect the holiday. And also, y'all better be ready. They're going to start being very disrespectful for Black History Month. All right, you're about to see a lot of disrespect for Black History Month and for Juneteenth. You're about to see a lot of disrespect for that, too. So y'all keep your eyes open for that. Uh, let's get Sonny, Sonny in the room. Let's get Sonny, and then we're going to get Chuck in the room. With Sonny, then Chuck. What up? What up? What up? Can you hear me? Yes. What's up, Sonny? What's up? Uh, real quick. Yeah, they they. I, I hate how they be trying to do MLK. I don't even pay no mind. I wanted to ask you something. I don't know if you touched on it yet. Have you heard about like those underground tunnels in Brooklyn? Did you this been going yeah. on? Please jump onto that because I've I've been doing a little bit of digging into it. But what's your take on that? Uh, thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. My New York people, man. They up there in the Jewish area in New York, they found these underground tunnels and now they're being very mysterious about what's going on. What the hell is that about? And I saw them bringing out soiled mattresses. Now, a lot of people are thinking this might have some uh, child trafficking thing going on with it. What the hell are these people up to up there in New York, man? Where are my New York people? What's the word on the street up there in New York? Cause that's weird. They got these underground tunnels. Who they're hiding? You, that's to hide somebody. If you got underground tunnels up there leading to people's, uh, what, what are they leading to? Was it leading to a synagogue or a house? What was it leading to? That's to hide people. Who are you hiding? Huh? My New York people, let me know what they're talking about on the streets. We got um, the sister here. I think she's in New York. Um, Breck, Bruick, how do I pronounce your name, sister? Brock, hey, dear, are you in Brooklyn? Yes, I'm from Brooklyn. Um, actually, the name is the uh, short for a Dutch city that Brooklyn was named after. That is why it has a weird spelling. 
Oh, okay. Now, what what are you hearing about them tunnels that was up there in Brooklyn? Okay, so um, one, people have been complaining for a long time. Uh, viral videos are going um, are going viral about the fact that somebody was saying that they heard Yiddish underneath the floor, and they live in a ground level apartment. There's no basement, and people were complaining about this. Um, the, the, from, I follow this, this Jewish lady who, you know, she talks about her life. So she spoke, she said that from her point of view, she said that, um, the old rabbi that they had there, he initially started to do this construction to try to get to the other synagogue, like, which I guess is down the block or around the corner or something like that. And they were digging under there, but then the rabbi died. And then they never continued the construction. And it's just not making sense to me. The that, that don't make no sense. None whatsoever. And all these years, because he died a long time ago. So all these years, this thing has been empty like that. But that guy, but people are saying that they heard Yiddish under their floor. The mayor had a, if you if you go on his, on his um, Instagram page, you'll see that the mayor had a meeting with all of the rabbis and then nothing was really said since then right they got real quiet about that Uh uh-huh it was like a big thing and then all of a sudden it was a cover-up how y'all covering that up that's crazy yeah and they supposedly arrested a bunch of people and they took out stuff and you saw what you saw what we saw like bloody things and mattresses and god knows what Wow, man, they were probably, thank you, beloved, they were probably, and man, what what rituals were these people under there doing? That sounds like it could have been some ritualistic stuff they were doing. Yeah, well, that that's insane. We got to look more into that. Let's get Stephanie. Stephanie in here. Miss Stephanie, you turn your microphone on, Stephanie. All right, Stephanie Bounce. Let's get Chuck. Chuck in here. What's up, good brother? How you doing, Mr. Chuck? Man, pretty good, pretty good, man. I'm out here in the OKC. Uh, man, I wanted to let you know, dude, I got some uh, some cotton scales, dude, from back in the day. Oh, wow. Did you get them from, like, an antique shop or something? Man, actually, my uncle was cleaning out these old white folks born down a little small town, and he was just taking shit across the scale, and I got to looking at them. I said, hey, hey, hold on, man. Give me that. Give me that. Set that to the side. So, yeah, man, I grabbed the, the weights, the the anchors. I grabbed it all, man. So let me get that info, man. I can shoot you some pictures of it. We can go from there. Yeah, hit me in the DM. Yeah, we got to see what's going on with that. Yeah, I might have to get that from you. And I, I let everybody know, if y'all get some of that old memorabilia from back in the day, if y'all um know some old white people, because they keep a lot of that stuff in their houses. And a lot of older ones, they, you know, when they die, y'all start seeing all types of clan robes and um, lynch ropes in their attic that they keep. They keep that stuff. So, yeah, let me know what y'all find. Uh, let's get, um, who we got? Achilles? Uh, yeah. What chances do you think uh, Vivek has of becoming the next president? Uh, oh, who becoming president? Uh, Vivek, the Indian. Who's running for president? He dropped out. You know that he dropped out. He oh. he he canceled. Yeah, he canceled his campaign and started to endorse Trump now because he wow. lost very Iowa tonight. Uh, also, uh, about the white white Americans, uh, what percent of white Americans do you think are immigrants? Um, I don't know. Now, where are you from with that accent? Where are you from? Uh, I'm in Europe. Yeah, but no. What part of Africa are you from? I'm not. I'm not African. Okay, what part of Africa are you from? I'm not African. I'm uh, South Asian. Oh, really? Yes. Really? What part of South Asia? Uh, Nepal. Okay, well, no, why'd you have to think about that? Because <laughs> no, I've been uh, living in Europe, you know, for the last 10 years. Oh, so you're from Nepal, South Asia. How long? Um, so you've been out there for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, when were you back in Nepal? What? 
When was the last time you were back in Nepal? Ten years ago. I mean, you haven't been back since? I haven't been back since. Why would I want to go back? Um, that's your homeland. Why would you just want to leave your people? Uh, but my homeland is struggling. Yeah. I can't live over there. Uh, um, well, what's the capital of Nepal, by the way? Kathmandu. Is that where you're from? Yes, sir. Oh, wow. So you, you're not trying to help your people over there? Uh, I, I'm, I, I can't do that. I, you said F them. Yeah, fuck you know? I got to take care of myself. They, uh, hey, at least you're being honest. Life is too short. He's, oh, the other night, like, <laughs> you're like, damn all that poverty yeah. and struggle. You got to come up. All right, all right, there you but, go. Uh, like I said, I was asking about the white Americans. I, I think a lot of white Americans, uh, I, I, I don't think they're, how can I say, uh, native, right? Uh, a lot of them are also immigrants that came in the 60s. Uh, well, they came, yeah, they came at different times, different waves of European the... immigration happened, yeah. And in what's your point, Mr. Um, Achilles? Uh, because uh, I just wanted to know about the history of the country. Okay, well, shit, I since don't have time fight, to give since a Since you're fighting white supremacy. Uh, okay. You should know about your enemies, don't you think? Oh, are they not your enemies? Uh, the, uh, not really, not my enemies, because I don't have anything to do with them, you know. Um, you don't? And you were out there in Nepal? I'm in Europe. But a lot of Europeans, um, because I asked this question, because uh, a lot of Europeans are also moving to America. Mm-hmm. Fleeing to America, <laughs> should I say, fleeing to America. Right, right. But, you know, Britain was controlling Nepal's economy for a long time. Uh, yes, they were. Yes. All, yeah, they were. They were. You know, they were whipping that ass, and that's probably why you had to to bounce to go to Britain. You're like, if the ass whippings are coming from the long belt, I might as well go get the short. No, no, we directly to we also fought back uh, the Gurkhas, uh, as you know. Mm-hmm. We also fought mm-hmm. back against the white supremacists, but but, but they prevailed, and um, you know, um, basically turned your place into a big old brothel. So they go over there and just have their way with the women and kids. You know that, right? Why do you have to disrespect my culture like that? I'm not trying to disrespect, but am I telling the truth or am I saying anything incorrect, sir? Uh, I think you're incorrect. Really? Yes, sir. Oh, how so? Uh, Because our people have a lot more pride than that. Um, Sir, we may be poor. but we are prideful people. Yeah, but y'all got a lot of child trafficking over there, sir. That's that's a big thing over there in your homeland. Have you ever been there? I've never been there, but I know about it. Okay, but do you think right? Do you think uh, white supremacy will ever be ended, or somebody can dismantle uh, white supremacy? Well, it would probably be foundational Black Americans because if you don't sound like you're you're trying to do anything to replace that system with the system of justice, you sound like you're pretty cool with playing second fiddle. Well, I'm, you know, I don't spit on a plate that feeds me. You know, I'm, right. I'm dependent on them. <laughs> you dependent on them, yes, right? Yes, sir. But, and that's right. That, that's, that, that's proof of white supremacy right there. And there's so nothing I can do about it. Yeah, you can. You can stand up for yourself. Well, go back and to my country? Back. Um, yeah, build up, um, stand up, stand and fight for yourself. But the what yeah. white supremacy control the whole world, the whole economy right. of the world, the whole wealth of the world, right? They're hogging up all and, the wealth, and we're gonna sit back and just let it happen. So, what you want me to do, go kill some white people, and that's gonna change everything? No, how is that gonna change anything? I didn't say that. Um, that's not gonna, you gotta get on code and you gotta build your economy and build up your culture. You don't flee from your culture. Cause if Some you people flee have from no your culture, choices, though. yeah, but you know, if you flee from your culture, um, that's gonna, that's not going to build up your, um, 
your empowerment zone. So yeah, that's not gonna build up, build up your empowerment. So you think only black Americans or FPS are gonna dismantle uh, white supremacy? No other race. What do you think about uh, other races like Arabs or Chinese or uh, do they have any chance? No. Um, no, y'all not gonna do nothing to white supremacy. Um, none of you guys. Middle Easterns? Uh, no, no. It doesn't say, y'all not gonna, and especially some of the West Africans, which used to be honest, and my, my man Mikhail is pointing out that you kind of sound like a West African. I swear to God, um, I'm not West African. I'm not. Uh, yeah, you kind of, they're saying that you kind of sound like one trying to pretend to be South Asian. I am South Asian. Why would I want to be West African? Because that accent isn't really South Asian. That's not a South Asian accent. People have different you probably, accents. You probably spent time in South Asia, right? You probably came from Africa somewhere, went over there and did some kind of coding work and then went to Britain. But yeah, your, Af your accent doesn't sound South Asian. I literally work in the kitchen. Uh, How were, you making were you making Joel officer now, in the kitchen? I, I make pastries. Right. I've been working for the last the, 10 years. Did the, were you making bushmeat pastries? I am not African, sir. Please. Sir, I, I am not. I I'm you, Nepal. Nepalese. No, no, nigga. Niggalese. You're a nigga from West Africa, sir. I don't believe you. I think you are a West African tether, pretending to be South Asian, sir. I don't believe you were making pastries. You were making um, leopard paws. Bush meat, the barbecued leopard paws, sir. I believe you are a West African tether pretending to I'm, be. I am not West African. I'm. I'm just not. Oh. I'm just not. I was. I'm just not. As speaking oh, so, of Britain, so, speak now. What, what kind of what kind of what kind of pastries were you making? Hmm? What kind of pastries were Roval, you making? Roval and Jean Weir. I'm in France. Oh. Oh, okay. Now, wait, you just said you were in Britain. Now you're in France. You got to get your lie together, sir. I never told you I was in Britain. I said France. No, I could have swore you said you were in Britain. Or, or you did you say Europe? Or maybe I misheard. I said Europe. And yes, France. Oh, oh so you're in France. Okay. I have another and that's, not a, and that's not even a French accent either. All right. I'm an immigrant, so how can I? So are you from like are you from like Senegal or something and then you had to go to France? No, sir. I'm not Senegalese. Yes, but there are a lot of Senegalese here, yes. Now what's what what kind of dishes did you eat when you were back home in Nepal? Uh a lot of chicken, chicken tandoori. Mm-hmm. Uh what about? a lot of dal bak, momos. Mm -hmm. Any chatamari, anything like that? I never heard of that, sir. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, what do you also, that's, that's because it. when I asked you about Vivek, I was just asking because the, uh, I think the prime minister of uh, UK is also East Indian. Now, how you never, now you said you never heard of Chatamari, and that's one of your, the, the most famous foods in Nepal. See, that's why I, I don't think you're from Nepal. Chatamari? So. Yeah. I never heard that's of that. One I of swear the, to God, I never heard that, of that. Because you're not from Nepal. You're not, you're not I am from Nepal. Nepal. Yeah. There's different sir, ethnic groups in Nepal who eat different dishes. Sir, sir, you're from the mall of Nigeria somewhere. You're from the mall. Because Chatamar is one of the most famous foods out there, sir. You just Googled, so you just Googled it and you just said it, sir. Right. So I think you're faking the funk. And the funk is under I the mall. I swear to God, I'm not faking it. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm Nepalese. There are different okay. ethnic groups in Nepal who eat different foods. My okay. ethnic groups don't eat the stuff that you just said. Okay. All right, sir. Like I said. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Let me get some more people. Let's get, um, um, what's up? Math. Yeah, I'm Mathis. A, Mathis Glasses. What's up, man? What's going on, Mathis? Now, where are you from, Mathis? I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. There you go. Are you a Mormon, sir? No, I'm, fr I'm originally from, uh, uh, San Diego, California. Okay, okay. So what's on your mind, Mathis? Well, I don't know, man. I've just been kind of like indoctrinated in the culture because my uh, family has been, so I've just been trying to talk, talk about it. You know what I mean? Now, what culture is that, sir? 
Well, in Salt Lake, California, um, it's mostly Hispanic and black. We say Salt Lake, California? Well, you know, th- th- that's what we call it out here. Okay. Yeah, and so uh, it, it's, um, it's 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 kind of shady to see that, like, people will be treating people like that. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm a little lost, but no, let, me, let me get some. I'm, I'm lost. Let me, let me let me get RPA. In. I don't know what what he's talking about. He kind of lost me. Um, RPA, what's up, brother? Hey, what's going on, bro? Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's on your mind? Hey, bro. Everything you've been saying has been right on about uh, the immigrant and the situations. Like, for example, you know, in Maryland, a lot of the Nigerians and Ethiopians get four eight hundred dollars a month in Montgomery County. Now, when you were saying about the things that they get incentives over FBA, man, I've been doing research for six months. It's all true, man. I have people who work in different government sectors. A lot of the immigrants get more, way better stuff than our kids. And we have no hands in none of it. And I want everybody to know this. All the cars in D.C. and Maryland have been getting stolen. It's a scam going on with West African immigrants paying our FBA kids to steal the cars and send it to West Africa. And all you guys can YouTube it or you can Google it on the news. All the cars have been ending up in Ghana and Nigeria. That's right. There's It's a finesse going on where I believe scammers are behind it, but they're from Africa and they're paying our kids to be the fall. But you guys can look that up. They've been on the news for the last two weeks. They had a, a detective behind it, and they found out that all of them been in Ghana and Nigeria. And also, Tyreek, they're giving them in Maryland the blue trade skill jobs. That's right. And they're giving them the free where the FBA kids got to pay for it. But if you're from an uh, immigrant country, it's free for you. Oh, wow. Wow. Man, it, um, I, man, they they get so many incentives. I be telling people, man, these folks ain't coming over here. They're talking about they they made it. How come we can't make it? Man, they get there's a whole plethora of benefits waiting on them when they get here. And I believe the car thing. I believe the car thing. They they're coming over and having these car theft rings. Remember the um singer Akon was um was part of a car theft ring. Remember that? Akon. Didn't he go to jail for that? But yeah, Akon was part of one of the big car theft rings, according to him. Um, so yeah, that's very, very real. Let's get um Stephanie, you ready to get on? Let's hold on. Stephanie? Um Yes, I'm I'm here. I just I just wanted to say how you doing. I appreciate you, your commentary, everything. I wanted to follow up with you when you asked about the tunnels in the basement in Crown Heights. Yes. First that first off, they um, stopped all investigation. All of those that were arrested, they um, they dropped all the charges, let them out. Wow. And they supposedly had sealed off the basement with cement. So there won't be any further investigations. They're claiming that the people wanted to be closer to worship in the temple during the COVID situation. So you see how the lines just change up real quick. Wow. The mattresses and, and everything that was now they're saying that it was supposed to have been a daycare center so people can take their children and worship and have the children in the basement. Who would have their children in the basement? That should be a fire hazard, right? Right, right, right. But, you know, of course, you got to understand, too, a couple of years back, a few a few rabbis was caught in organ harvesting, too. So, oh, yeah. yeah, keep a close eye on that. But that's all I had to say. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, they they covered that up real fast. You heard about it. It was a big hoopla. And then the next day, nothing. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How come we hear nothing about this story? That's major. Damn underground tunnel. And there's mattresses with that soil getting pulled out. And now they ain't saying nothing. So, yeah, it was. There was some cover ups coming from the top on that one. Let's get um, M3 Mikos. I think that's your name. Yes, sir. How's it going, Smiko? I'm good. How are you, brother? I'm doing okay. I just wanted to touch on that and touch on to something that someone else said before that 
about, you know, the trays and how they're allowing them into those trays. First thing about the tunnels to me, and I had mentioned this to a couple of people in the spaces, and I don't know if it went over their heads or not, but I'm watching this on the news. I'm watching it briefly, and I'm not really seeing what I'm used to as a tradesman, a blue-collar guy who's been in the trays, a power driver, dude, Tariq, dude, I've been in the trenches, dude, I know all about this. There hasn't been, I haven't been seeing you know, OSHA out there. I haven't seen, I haven't seen, um, no, no iron workers out there. You don't see rebar coming in on trucks. The, the, the massive scale of those, those tunnels created a lot of damage underground. Uh, it, 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 it damaged a lot of infrastructure around and they need to be investigated. And it's not something that should just be privatized and it could be handled by that person that, 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 you know what I mean? That, that 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 company that did it no this needs to be investigated by osha a whole bunch of engineers need to be out there testing you don't right. see that you know what i mean so i just wanted the people to, to 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 be aware of that too when you're seeing this on the news that man don't believe that because look at this dude you don't see no wood they don't have you have to form that stuff up to re you have to form it up to, to to be able to create a wall you know what I mean? And you ain't seen that. You see a couple of finishers going up in there, a Mexican dudes with a couple of pans and stuff, but you don't see no dudes with their bags going up in there and really putting in some work. And, um, right. you know, with that, with that being said is that, you know, I, I, you know I, I've been doing it for 12 years and I mentioned that I'm willing to put my, you know, some time to the side and get an institution to where we can, we can, you know, Negro first, we can come in here and not nonprofit and I can teach you how to use these tools from, from power drivers to electricians or whatever. So thank you for giving me, for allowing me to speak. And, uh, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, brother. But yeah, they, um, to do that, the the and I, I thought about what this brother was saying too. For them to go underground and dig tunnels, that had that had to be coming from the top. That's not something that a private citizen can do in New York City, out of all places. Now, if you're on a farm somewhere, ain't nobody around. You could probably dig, dude. That had to be coming from somebody on the top, on the low. How do you get away with not having to get the permits? And listen, listen, listen. Out here in LA, when when I had my swimming pool built, we had to get all types of city permits, construction permits. This is for my own back damn yard, dude. We had to get all types of permits just to dig a hole in my backyard and put some cement in it. How do these dudes dig a whole tunnel in the one of the most metropolitan cities on earth and don't nobody know about it how that happened they had some connections up top dude what construction companies did they go through where they paid them to be quiet and who did they pay off that that came from the top there's some high up stuff going on with that and if they drop charges on them, there's a reason why, because it, it's something that had to go up to the top. Some politicians, some some big folks had to be involved with that to let that go on. You're not going to dig a damn tunnel in New York. And the permit office and the, um, the Corps of Engineers, all of these people don't know about it, man. Well, yeah, something is weird about that. I wonder what that's really, really about. All right, let's get... um. Let me see. A lot of people in the building tonight. A lot of folks in the building tonight. Let's get revolution. Revolution in. Let's get some of these new faces. What's up, revolution? All right. And then, what's going on, my brother? What's, how are you doing, Mr. Revolution? I'm doing very well. And yourself? I am good. Can you speak up a little bit, sir? Yeah, your phone is a little low. Uh, is this any better? A little bit better. Next time, if you get an earpiece, don't get it off the Timu app because those don't really work that well, sir. Mm -hmm. But what's on your mind? What's on your mind? No, my brother. I just, uh, you know, I, I agree with you. You know, anybody who's building uh, tunnels under Manhattan, you know, if they weren't of, you know, the J word persuasion, they would have a hard time with that. Yeah. 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 They, somebody knew somebody knew somebody who knew somebody 
with that, you know. And yeah, something is definitely being covered up from the top. So that's very interesting. All right. I see a lot of folks in here. I see Teslin down there. I see you, Tez. I see Juicy Genius down there. I see you. Let's get our brother Q. Let's get Q in here. Then we're going to get Baby Moore in here. All right. Hop on. Mr. Q. What's up, Q? How are you? Oh, did you have Q first or what? Oh, that's Baby Moore. That's Baby Moore. What's up, Baby Moore? All right, what's up? Uh, I wanted to make two points, but um, before that, yeah, with the tunnels, now you know what's going on with all the kids being snatched up. It's got to be those tunnels. But, uh, I mean, you really ain't got to look no further. That's what it is right there. The rabbit hole, literally. Hey, that, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. We don't know. We we don't know what's going on with that. Um, Q, you ready to get on? Hey, peace to Rick. What's going on, man? I'm good, man. How are you? I just first of all, happy uh, Martin Luther King Day. Uh, first yeah. of all, and I just want to. And speaking of that, I just wanted to touch on that FBI tweet. That is absolutely crazy. And I don't know if you've um, addressed that yet on the space. I did. Oh yeah, I talked about that earlier. <sighs> Sorry to be on that, but see, that's absolutely crazy to me. To just. <sighs> Yeah, they do that troll stuff every year. That's them just rubbing it in our faces. Mm. So they make it a point to to kind of troll us about, hey, 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 we know we did it, but yeah, you know, shout out to him. So you know, that's how the 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 suspected white supremacists get down. You know, they they have to low key mock us. They sit back and high five each other and kai kai and ki ki. We're doing stuff like that. Let's get Belly D in here. Belly D, hop in. Mr. Belly D, hop in. 